One of the things that I'm thinking a lot about with this album release of In Vacant Dates and Intentions is the song order, the track order on the album itself. Because to me, I want the whole album to have this succinct progression throughout. So I wanted to have some progression that made sense to me. And one of the ways that I did that, I, I put all of the songs onto a playlist in Google Music and I would just order them differently. And I knew that I wanted to start with Voices in the Overtones because that song just sums up a lot for me right now. It, it, it really makes me feel good. Basically, the song is about following your dreams, your passions, and ignoring those folks who say that it's a bad idea or that you should be doing something more practical with your time. I knew that was gonna be first, and I knew we've bobbed held further for less, it was gonna be last. I knew those two things before going in to ordering the songs, but other than that, I didn't know. So I would listen to my playlists over and over again. I would change the positions of the song, listen to the album again, change the positions of the song, listen to it again, again and again and again, because I want the entire thing to sort of tell a story even though the songs aren't really related a lot of the times. First two songs, Voices in the Overtones and Precision Meets Passion, are both really cool, but a little bit serious in that they are very motivational for me. And I didn't want people to think that the rest of the album was going to be all motivational or all this or all that. So then I decided to go in a different direction after those two songs and play the occasionally I stand a little different which is goofy you know it shows another side of me right off the bat at the beginning of the album on the third song it's a weird song that is just me on the harmonica with some percussion and I sing right so it's different and I wanted to get that out of the way so that you know what to expect or not expect from me, right? And then we get into another song of uh, Thistle Bill, which goes right off of that sort of relaxed, funny mood or theme. So I wanted to set that up and say, okay, this sets the stage for the rest of the album. There's gonna be some things that are serious and some things that are funny. So with those first four songs, you sort of get what the rest of it's gonna be about. The fifth song, Whoop Jamboree, that one I had a lot of trouble placing in the album. At first, I had it second to last. I had that as the ninth track. But it felt a little out of place. Like, after that was we've bobtailed further for less, and Whoop Jamboree is a really driving song the way that I play it. It's pretty energetic. So it just had a weird feeling at the end of it because I go from this really energetic place from Whoop Jamboree, Whoop Jamboree to we've bobtailed further for less, and it, it left me feeling a little bit, I don't know, weird. So I changed it to be right before Fat Bear. And that seemed like a good spot. It seemed like a really good fit because you have the energy from Voices in the Overtones at the beginning. It was a nice place to add in another bit of energy and set you up to listen to a really long song, the longest song on the album in Fat Bear. Fat Bear is eight minutes long, and I wanted to set that somewhere in the middle of the album because it was so long. But I didn't want to put it at the end because then it's just like, okay, here's the long song at the end of the album. I wanted to put it someplace in the middle because it's a very long story. It's a true story about the assassination of Kim Jong-nam, 
it's, it's bathed in metaphor. There's tons of metaphor in it. So you can skip it if you want, if you don't understand it or you don't, you don't dig it. And there's plenty of people I completely understand. Like it's very, uh, it's very old folk style. So it, it doesn't change. There's no chorus really. There's no bridge. So it's just the same chords on every verse. It does change time though in the B part, which, which breaks it up a little bit, but I can understand why somebody wouldn't like it. But it was really my documentation of an event in history, and it, the event in history had a lot of details. <laughs> it had a ton of details. So I wanted to see what it would be like to write about that, and I'm, I'm happy with it. I like the song. It's just a really long eight and a half minute song. So I wanted that one in the middle, and then after, I figured there would be a nice little spot for a quick, energetic song to get you ready for the rest of the album. So that's where I put in the connector. And then the eighth song on the album is, oh geez, what was the eighth song? The eighth song is the connector. The ninth song was I Grew Up On Game. The eighth song, oh, Three Villainous Ministers. So that one gets back into the energy before we start to slow things down at the end with I Grew Up On Game and We've Bobbed Held For Less. Those two work really well, I feel, at the end. Uh, it's a good spot for Three Villainous Ministers. Also, I didn't want to put Whoop Jamboree and Three Villainous Ministers together, so close together because those two have very similar harmonica styles. And I didn't want those two to blend together and cause uh, listener fatigue, in a sense, because those two harmonica styles are so similar. So that's just my thought process going into it. Uh, we Bowed Tail Further for Less is a slower song that I wanted to have as a uh, ending off point because it's uh, it just means that we keep going right so I wanted everybody to know at the end of that album that I'm not done I am far from done about making music I figured I'd let my thought process go on that because a lot of people say that the first song should be your best song but if that's the case then why the hell would I listen to the rest of an album? If you're coming out of the gates and you are saying that, and I've heard producers and artists say that before, you should have your best song be the first song on an album. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that. I think that if you are making an album, you should have all the songs be good so then you should have trouble picking which song you want to be what, what, what song you want to put first I think you should put an album together so it is a succinct piece of work that does not include any filler material because if you basically put your first song that's that you consider your best song first then how am I to know that you don't have filler material and you're just using that time to have me listen to shit, right? I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that prospect. I think you should put together an album that sounds good as one piece, right? Or else why bother for the tradition of releasing an album? Like we don't need to release albums now in the 21st century we can release singles that's it and if you are so concerned about having your best song out there then just release it as a single don't make me listen to a whole bunch of shit you know what i'm saying so that's how i feel about the topic if you're going to do an album in the 21st century you better make it a nice succinct piece of art that sounds good when you listen to it all together. <laughs>